The previous two panels I talked about in this little bit of a series of breaking down each panel, what parts I have and don't have, were a little bit more centralized in the details they had based on the major factor on it, like the gear window or the screen that was on them. So they, they were pretty simple in comparison to the next ones. They, believe me, they had complicated details per uh, finding specific details, specific parts, and figuring out what's what. However, going forward, these next ones have a lot more to talk about, and I'm really excited to do that. I'm also really excited to lead up to my custom panel to share that with you, because I completely redesigned and changed that based on my earlier videos. So uh, let's just jump into this one. This one is the communications panel. Uh, it is most identified by the fact that it has a large drop-in uh, window panel control section in the middle of it, but it has a lot of really cool details. Uh, this is one of my favorite panels, mostly because it just has uh, a few tactile switches and buttons, and, and I've also discovered quite a few parts. So I'm really looking forward to actually going on that work with you guys. The next couple panels are also favorites of mine, so really when it comes down to it, about half the panels are my favorites and half are my secondaries, so whichever works out. I, I really like all of them for different reasons, but this is, this is a really cool one. Starting from the bottom, uh, right in the middle, we'll go with that, uh, there are some switches, or some dials. If you didn't notice it before in the videos or anything you've ever seen of this particular one, there are two different knobs. In the middle is a uh, more of a, a rounded switch, and then on the ends are more gear-based ones. So there's four of those. The gear-based ones, which are these guys right here, they're from Bulgan. They, they're pretty pretty common to come across. I have seen them here and there on eBay. Uh, they usually go for about thirty dollars or 30, 30 pounds even sometimes. And and it's pretty it's pretty neat. It's got a skirt on it. It has the this particular detail at the inset. It does match a lot of the other switches and dials that they have on the console, so it's really great. And then of course the middle one is this one, which is more of a standard uh, bake light style knob or switch or dial or whatever. Uh, it's really interesting. It, to, to me, why did they have four in one? To me, it's, it's either they only had four of these and they had one of these and they just made it work out and they put that one in the middle. Who knows? Could have done it on purpose as well, uh, but really, as far as that's concerned for the replication, replicating is what I wanted to do. However, so just to put this in perspective, I do have one of each of these. These are fully uh, old pieces, old parts, vintage pieces, but I needed another three of these. So I did have my partner, Elena, cast them. So they don't have any sort of switch on the bottom. We will be boring a hole out and getting one of these collars in so we can actually use them as is. But they are a complete one-to-one -one copy. Uh, we, we're even going to paint in the lines there so they match. On the outset, you can't even really tell that they're different um, when you're looking at them from the top. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, it, it is a little bit easier and because, again, hard to find. Uh, I've only ever seen two other Bulgan dials when I've been looking for them on eBay, which means at this point I'd have three. And again, the expense of that compared to the expense of casting, you know, outweighs itself. Now, the good thing about casting and having a mold is that anyone else who's building this console, um, I will have these molds to be able to offer casts of these at some point uh, when you need them, if, especially if you can't find them. So, now what's interesting is underneath these is that serrated fluted metal reflector thing that we don't know what it is yet. Uh, it's unknown whether or not they put the you know the, the bore thrust pieces, the the ball bearing rings on, on the top of that to kind of you know go with the skirt to make it go spin around easier. But I don't know what they are still. So they are interesting, and again they show up a couple spots. So what are they? But my cast, at least that I mentioned in my previous videos, will work for this, and it's it's going to be fine. Uh, one thing I don't know is how these are going to turn and twist, like whether they're just going to free rotate like a potentiometer or whether I want it to actually ratchet, maybe a little bit of both. It'd be kind of fun to have a tactile solution, some of and some just going to spin freely. Uh, I don't really recall the doctor using them exclusively in the show, so I don't know what he did with them aside from maybe just kind of really quickly do something. So I think it's going to be up to me to decide what I want them to do, but I'm really excited to do that. Now, in between all of these switches is two part, or three parts, actually. We're going to talk, start with the bottom ones. There are two of these, which is a push to test button. Um, I don't know much about these. They're from a panel that I got from a friend back in Ontario that were on a big giant panel with a bunch of gauges and such. So they were really great to find. Uh, they look pretty much exactly what they use. So I'm really excited about these pieces. But the other two in the middle, I don't know what they are. Uh, the closest I've come out across them uh, is this image I'm putting up here from another aviation panel. It looks really close. It has that same kind of ribbed button switch with the same kind of like light in the middle. 
but I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I have reached out to the panel maker to ask them what this part is in case I can just get a couple of them uh, for the use of the console, but otherwise I'm not sure what it is. If I can't find it, I'm just gonna use four of these and call it a day because they do light up. I might have to modify them so that I can put an LED in there or maybe find a way to light it up. I don't even know yet, but these are really cool. Again, these are push to test buttons. They're used on aircraft and obviously machinery panels. And they're really cool. You can occasionally cop them on eBay. Again, they are expensive because they are usable, currently available usable pieces. Some of these parts are vintage. Some of the vintage parts are still used in the machining fields and the manufacturing fields. So it's kind of got to kind of be careful, but when you're finding parts, if it's still a usable uh, part, it's going to be more expensive than something used. So just kind of keep an eye on that kind of thing. Uh, and, and especially because some vintage parts are actually worth more just because they're vintage. So, so now moving on to either side uh, of that, of those switches there and just moving up a little bit, you do have these guys. Now these are car lane toggle clamps, CL500 uh, HVTC or the 300, which is the one I grabbed here for my scale. These are great. You, they, they are fully realized of what they are. They do take these apart. Uh, this is a red plastic disc part on the actual one, which is various reasons. You can get them in various colors. Uh, this green just does pop off and you can replace it with red if, if I need to. And then everything is just kind of like taken off so that it just kind of slides down. It is a clamp, so typically you pull it in and then you clamp down the object. This one obviously is just brand new. Uh, it hasn't been rusted or used. I would have really preferred to find a really rusty used one. It would have been great, but so far these are, these are great. Uh, I may still go a different direction with this. Uh, for a number of reasons. So far, this is this is though, this is an exact part what you can get. You can still get them from a car lane and I would highly recommend getting them for your build if you want that. Uh, they do also have available some other pieces um, or files you can use for reference if you need a 3D model or whatnot. But they're pretty cool. I, I think I think it's a great piece. It gives a good tactile like, pull down. Uh, it does have lights behind it. So when they are up or down, I think when it's up, it hits off the light, the two yellow lights there and they turn on, which I hope that is what this does. I didn't mention in the, the buttons or the switches before. I don't know if they're gonna do anything specifically like turn on lights or whatnot. But for now, they're just gonna be a tactile switch. And these are gonna turn on the lights. So moving along to the bottom left corner, we have two items. It's three items, but two of the same thing. And it's a couple joysticks from like a forklift controller or whatnot, and a push to operate stop button. Now to push to operate stop buttons, I haven't been able to find the exact ones. Uh, nothing with that base and nothing with that exact look. There's just, there's so many of these guys. Like there is, there's, there's hundreds of this type of button. But I did find a couple here in Canada that were pretty cool, but I could only get one in red and then I got one in blue. So uh, my red ones in a will be in a different video, but for now, this is the blue one. And it does have this kind of box around it, which I may replace because it does come out. Uh, it's gonna be a very simple, just push button. It doesn't really gonna do anything. However, it's just a really fun detail. This part here, this collar looks pretty, pretty close and I'm, I'm happy about that. So for now, I'm gonna go with that. But the joysticks, I'm not 100% sure about the joysticks that I grabbed. Uh, I did get them from AliExpress and they look like this. And they just, they feel a little big, but maybe they won't when they're actually in the console. It's, it's really hard to judge scale on a computer or in hand just because of how it is. But I got two different ones because there's two joysticks on there. And so there they are like this. And I want to make sure that they were kind of fun. So I have one joystick that you click different directions and I have one that doesn't hold. So it springs back. I figured that way we kind of give a, a, a different tactile expression while I'm playing with it and clicking things. You know, I could push one to the four and move one down and let go type of thing. But they're pretty fun. Uh, they're, they weren't terribly expensive again on AliExpress, but they, they are big guys and they do a lot of stuff. So that's why they have this whole control here. Jumping to the other side, we have another three objects in there that are kind of interesting. The top one is something, I don't know what it is. What is it? It looks kind of just like a thing. Uh, it's, it, I don't, I don't know. It, it has a, a, like a little bit of a neural and, a, and an orb at the top and it can kind of move up and down, I guess. It's a, like four, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Do you recognize it? If anyone on this watching this video recognizes what that is, please let me know. Cause at this point it just looks like a thing. Like it looks like they just grabbed it and they stuck it on there and they're like, I don't even know if it's a switch. I don't even know if it's an actual tactile mechanical thing or if they just had something really cool and they grabbed it and they want to put it on there, who knows. But that does lead me into the red post that's underneath that. And that is this guy. Now, 
this piece is about 95% accurate to that piece. And I'll tell you why that 5% is wrong. And that is this bottom piece. Now this bottom piece, it, it's two pieces. And it springs, springs in there. So you put it in there and you just kind of spring and clamp it on. Uh, this piece here is just a knurled handle. The one on the actual console has uh, like a base. I had to create the base for this to kind of go into, but that base looks like it was actually part of this. I could be wrong. It could have just been a bunch of these. I don't know. This piece I got from Bob's Bits. I don't know what it is. If anyone recognizes this, please let me know because I'd like to keep this updated as far as what parts are because I don't know everything. Uh, it does look like this is a tube connector, some like airflow. Initially, I actually thought this was a laser for like a, you know, a laser cutter or whatnot, but it has a post in the middle, which to me would stop a laser be in the way. But the airflow to me is a significant piece. And again, whatever it is up here, um, to screw into is what matters as far as what it attached to, but I don't know. Uh, but this is a piece from Bob's Bits that I did, that they did find for me when I messaged them and contacted them. And it is this piece up here, hundred percent is the exact piece. The last time when I was talking to Bob's Bits and then sourcing this out, they did have a few extra one of these. So if you are interested in building this console, definitely contact them and try and get more of these and you can let them know it's the red cylinders. Um, there is a number on the bottom of this. I don't know if it means anything because it's handwritten. So anyway, if you guys recognize this, let me know what it is. But that that is that piece. And then we have a gauge. Now, I have a really cool, interesting story. Not really, really cool, but an interesting story about this was that when I initially was working on this console, uh, you know, six years ago, uh, I was designing this piece. Uh, I had 3D modeled it and had come really close. I thought I did a really good job 3D modeling considering my 3D modeling at the time was very new. And I was very happy with it. But then I stumbled upon this. So it is an aviation or plane gauge. Now typically you'd have a row of these with different features on them. It's got the black screen on it. It's really cool. And it was really close. I was like, you know what? This is really close. So I purchased it on eBay. It was something like $40, $50 uh, once it all said and done. And it was really cool. I'm really happy with it. And I was like, oh, this is great. And it says amps AC. Now the one in the photos, which you're seeing here do say AC volts. So Whatever voltmeter these are, these were obviously amps, and then and those ones were volts. Okay, cool. I found one that was j just just next to it, basically, and so I left it. And then a few, uh, well, about a year or so ago, uh, I took another chance. I took another search online, and I found it. So this one is the exact one. If you're looking here, you can do a comparison with the close-ups I'm posting here and the pictures. It's, it's the exact one. The numbers are the same, everything, the font, everything, everything's the same. This is, this is the exact part of it. I'm really excited about this. This is all exciting. And when you put them together, you do have your amps and volts. You can see how they would go together on a cockpit or whatnot. Uh, so this is, this is, this is about keep, keep searching, keep, keep looking, but I, I would have been okay settling for this one. Cause I think in the end it was still would have read the same as far as a prop. And again, this is my, my console. But now I have this extra one, which I will probably sell at some point, but it's pretty close. And I'm really excited how close I got in the initial, but now I'm super stoked that I got the exact, exact one. Moving straight from there is a dump truck uh, push to operate control panel. Now this one was actually kind of interesting because this is probably the most, one of the most modern pieces on this entire build. And you can still get these. Uh, they come in lots of different uh, usages. They're in America and in the UK. They, they're pretty much a standardized piece of equipment that you use for dump trucks or whatever. I really don't know too much about the mechanical aspect of it except for that. You can actually see this in the behind the scenes pictures that Nick Roboto posted that you can actually see the entire column. I got this one that I have right here that was completely used on eBay. Uh, I have to take off the screws, take off the plate, but I wanna leave it on here for this for now. Uh, it does have a red and yellow button as opposed to the black one that is on there, but this is beat up and this is used. I wanted. The ones you get, you can get this exact part and you can get brand new ones. It's not a big deal, but I love the idea of having old, like not functioning things, right? Like to put on this, I don't have to worry about stealing a functional item from somebody. Not that I, that, that's how that works, but you know, just, I like the idea of something old. So it's got dirt and dinge, it's gr kind of grody. So I can't wait to take that plate off and have that on there and with the light there, but it does function. So you can, you push it out you pull down the switch. You got a button here. So it, it is something that actually does something. So that makes me really excited. And it's the actual piece. So it's it's an actual part. It's it's fully accurate. Well, mostly accurate. If I want to change that to a black button, I can, I can paint it. Uh, but we'll see. I might not. I might leave it again because this is my console. I'm keeping it as close 
as I can. I, it's already gonna be a little smaller and I'm okay with it being a little bit inaccurate here and there. But that was pretty fun. Now when you jump over to the other side, in this case, fully accurate piece. Now this is a Philip Harris Limited uh, galvanometer I got from Bob's Bits. It was one of the first things I got from there, which I'm really excited about. It was one of the first pieces I were actually identified on this console from Bob's Bits. So it's pretty awesome. This is 100% accurate. It's the right size, scale, and all the writing, everything. It's, it's, it's the exact same one. Wow. I haven't been able to find these online. I did find recently what it is, or what it would be called, which is a Center Zero moving coil galvano made, galvanometer. I'm probably butchering how to say that. Um, by, Phyllis, by Philip Harris Limited in Birmingham from about 1965 to 1975, and it scaled to 35, 0, 35. So if you're looking for one of these, again, this will be listed in the comments below, or in the description below. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, if he still has it at Bob's Bits, I'd highly recommend getting this. Moving up from there, just rolling up from there, there is a switch that I don't know what it is. It looks like a uh, washer dryer barbecue AC controller from a car. I don't know. It's a switch on some sort of base, which reminded me immediately of like one of these. Now this is something I harvested for my foam TARDIS console build from many years ago. And it's like from a dryer and it does the clicks. It's very similar. Um, I have this just currently because it might be something I have to use. I don't know. Um, I, or I may end up 3D modeling it just to get something that's pretty close. I don't know much about it. Uh, I can't tell if that dot in the middle lights up or not. I can't tell what it does. I don't know what it's from. If you recognize it, please let me know uh, in the comments or contact me otherwise on Instagram or whatnot because I don't, I don't recognize it at all. I have done searches on everything and it's hard because when you're looking in Google, you're either looking for vintage parts that don't really necessarily have the right labeling when you're searching, but you're also looking at new stock. So if I'm looking up AC controllers for a car, even if it's a vintage car, it's still new parts and they're not necessarily in the right thing. So unfortunately, I don't know exactly what this is, but if you guys know, that would be fantastic. But that also leads to the next part up from there, which is also a piece on both sides that I don't know what it is. Now what's neat about this is it looks like a door handle. I know. And I would be inclined to go with it. Like it looks like a screen door, just a regular, you know, any kind of door handle like that, but it has a needle on it. And, and, and when it has a point like that, it, it always says to me that that's supposed to point to something. So my thought is it's some sort of control knob. It does have a seam down. It has a screw at the back, which does lead me to believe it's more like a knob than it is a uh, lever latch for like a door. Don't hold that against me though. If you recognize it and you've seen it and you know what it is, I would be happy to be wrong in this, uh, especially if I get my hands on one, but I haven't been able to get my hands on one at all. And this one's a little harder for me to 3D model as well. So I have actually reached out to somebody to help me 3D model it so that I can 3D print them and then obviously make it available for anyone else who's making those consoles or wants them. Cause I actually want to put these on my custom console, console panel as well. So. I don't know what they are. Uh, it, it, again, this is the frustrating thing. What are they? What is this piece? Up from there, again, on either side is the rotary thumbnail digi switches. Now I got mine on eBay and I did something a little different. So this is the full size one that I have here in my hand. And if you're gonna notice right away, it has four spots, four numbers instead of five. I was concerned when I was doing my initial working out that five was gonna to be too crowded and it wouldn't actually fit in the spaces that they're supposed to sit. So I'm on four. Now what I did do is I did find ones that had double digits. So I could actually still have five numbers if I wanted to replicate a specific thing or just go nuts. Uh, they do make smaller versions of this, but I thought that they would just, it would just look wrong. I mean, yes, my console is pretty much gonna look everything's like it's a little more crowded than the real one but I still like the idea of having full size items. So I'm still undecided. And until I cut it out of the actual panel, I'm still deciding on these. But these are really cool. You can get them on eBay, you can get them brand new. This is a new part, so I have to kind of digit it up a little bit. You can still get these. So again, they're by DigiSwitch and you get them, they're hand wheel, uh, what did I say, the rotary thumbnail DigiSwitches. So go for it, uh, whatever way you wanna go. You can get them and you can expand them. Uh, these plates on the sides come off and you can make really long ones if you wanted to. So really cool prop in general. There you go. In the middle top is another voltmeter. It's kind of rounded square and it looks like this. 
another original part that I got from Bob Spitz. So thank you, Bob Spitz, for everything you've given me so far. I really appreciate it. Uh, and as I go through these, by the way, I'm gonna kind of start posting them a little bit on Instagram to kind of fill that up as well, highlighting what every part is uh, and where you can get it. But this is so great. This is, this is really worn. It's actually yellowed with age. I haven't decided if I'm gonna try and clean it up. There is some things I can do to clean that up while retaining the graphics on it. I haven't decided yet because I do also like the age of it. And it's probably just in the yellow again. I have kept it under things or in boxes, so I, I think that's just how it came. Uh, there's not much on this as far as what it is. I have not been able to find any online. I have taken a look using the serial numbers and information that is on it uh, to actually try and search, but nothing. I've, I've gotten absolutely nothing. But it looks cool, and I'm looking forward to it. One thing about these gauges I'm hoping to be able to figure out is a way to make them the needles move. Uh, I don't know how but I'm hoping to be able to do so. Jumping down into the drawer or recessed area, there's a couple things there. There's a bunch of switches and lights that actually turn on and off. They're, they're in a sequence of yellow and blue, depending on which one you turn on and off. And I'm gonna be able to replicate that pretty easily. I do have a lot of these little switches that are really great and they, they're exactly the same part. So I'm really excited about those. I got a whole whack of them from AliExpress. So I'm really happy to put those in there. In the middle of those though is a red anodized metal piece, which is this one. Again, Bob's Bits, again, I have no idea what it is. If you know what it is, again, tell me in the comments below because I'm really interested. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's got, it looks like it ended up screened to something at some point and then maybe had like some sort of label or device on it or something. I'm not entirely sure, but it is neural to just spin. So uh, what's really neat about this is and you have another thread bore <laughs> bearing, bearing piece on it that goes in there. Again, no idea what that is, but in the middle, you can see one of those little top hat screw pieces that is in a few other places on this build that I still would like to find if I can, uh, because it's pretty simple. And I swear I've seen them. I just can't figure out what they're called 100%, but I'm looking forward to actually grabbing them and putting them on. But this is really cool. This was something that actually helped me with the scale and to figure out what it was. Well, at least what everything else was. Up from there, we're just gonna jump to the back and that is the lights. Now I got a bunch of lights that are really close. These are green lights and you can't really tell. I'm hoping that when I show this, I can actually show up behind some light, but they are fluted uh, on the inside. And these ones look like they're fluted on the outside. So these are the closest ones I get at, the point, at this point in time. However, I might 3D design the proper looking ones using the same threading so I can still put them in these bases and then uh, have them blow more correctly or I'll just leave them the same. We'll see. These, All these lights and stuff were, were really interesting to find. So. I want to keep it nice and easy because it's a, it's a lot of work to do all these lights and all these lenses and to find them all. Underneath that is a, I don't know, ball lever, ball handle lever. Uh, I have no idea what it is. And here's another part, part, if you guys know what it is or if any of you know anyone who could know what it is, please let me know. I have zero idea. Uh, I have 3D modeled this, so I'm gonna show that here. And you can see that I just kind of worked it out as far as how it works, what it's gonna be made out of. I may play with the idea of getting the machine out of metal and then doing 3D printing the actual base so that it, it all still goes together, but you still get the tactile metal sense. There's a button on the back that when you push into the back, it lights up the green LED. So it works out uh, for how they do. And I did I did buy a bunch of those uh, tactile button switches. I have them in a, in a box with my TARDIS building stuff uh, to go over when I get to that part of installing uh, each piece. But for now, I don't know what this is. Uh, they have six of them, which means it's it's something. It is a, it's a thing that, that is made for machining or some sort of other mechanical use, but I don't know what it is. So again, if you guys know what it is, please let me know. Uh, but I think that that does it for this, this panel. Um, the only other part to reference, which I just realized it jumped over. So sorry for rewinding here, but this is better than an insert. So at the bottom between all the switches is this like gear. I don't know what it is. It is a micro gear. It looks like, uh, I, I'm again, not sure what it is. So if you recognize it, it does show up in a couple different panels and it does have a whole, holy, a holy washer that runs around it. Not sure what it is hundred percent, but I'm hoping to be able to work that out and machine those and 3D print and castles. Because I did make a 3D model, which is you're also seeing here. So yeah, if I haven't found it, I'm gonna 3D model it uh, for, the, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm gonna have an approximate size and worst case scenario is I find the actual part and I replace them later. Best case scenario is at least I have something there. So if you guys recognize any pieces that I haven't identified or don't have, please, please let me know in the comments below. Share with your friends and family. Uh, again, I'll be posting these on Instagram so that at least uh, you can share them and figure out hopefully what they are. I really like that. And to kind of figure out for anyone else who's building this kind of console who wants to find out what it is. Anyway, guys, 
I know this is a long video, it's probably not gonna be the longest because some of the other panels have a lot more to them. So anyway, thank but I ho hope this was informative. I hope, hope you enjoyed this. But thanks so much for, for everything you guys have done for me so far. And thanks for all the comments that you've given me so far as well to figure out what's what. But thank you guys so much for, for being with me on this and who are super interested in knowing all these pieces and where they go and where I got them. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for, for liking. Thank you so much for subscribing, keeping my channel going. I'm really excited to be where I'm at right now with it. Uh, even though there's a few little frustrations which I'll go into in a future video. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. At the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for watching.